rest. I have one thing. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh. I was still out in the hallway while the stuff was going on. Mm-hmm. We're in the, the spire, spire by fire is in the core spire, Correct. right? Correct, yes. The prism emporium is also on the core spire, yes? It is. I would like to sneak out, please. <laughs> okay. You see across the way, finishing, closing up all the curtains on the walls, and holding in one hand what looks to be a steaming clay mug of some sort of a, a, a drink. Uh, Tuyun himself, uh, her you know, elven form kind of wrapped tightly in like a, 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 a thick night robe, getting ready to go out and uh, leave for the night, having finished closed up shop. I'm sorry. Your door was closed. Uh, oh my God. Whoever's here, um, I don't want any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Move it around in the dark real quick. Someone's shop should be like their home. You should feel safe. He's stealing my shtick. <laughs> uh, so, I certainly. I certainly want to talk this out, whoever you might be, and you watch as she like starts moving over towards kind of this side Don't. portion of the middle. It's important that someone who runs a shop charges fairly for their wares. <laughs> I, I, I charge what I find to be a fair price, given the, the work and craftsmanship and the market price of such items, that's how you maintain a business. That's... <laughs> Disappointing to <laughs> There was a time years ago where I would have just sat by my lonesome <laughs> and hated you from afar. But there's a different side of me now, and he wants to And you see <laughs> the fucking werewolf just <laughs> <laughs> Turns her back. <laughs> Just grab her and pick her up. <laughs> she goes and reaches for the for the door to try and like get it unlocked as you grab the back. Um, go ahead and make an athletics check. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't want to see him in a Whole Foods. Let this be a morning charge fairly for your wares. <laughs> And I'll slash across her arm. Oh shit! Okay, <laughs> uh, are you going for like actual damage or just a? Damage. Like, oh. Okay, go ahead and roll an attack. Oh my god! Six hit points. Oh god! I know. A fourteen to hit. I didn't hit that. That definitely hits because okay. she's not armored. Okay. She is a merchant. Cool. Claw. Uh huh. And then here with the. Uh. That's nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. All right. So, just double checking with you. Mm -hmm. Are you are you trying are you trying to just scare her with the wound, or are you trying to to go all in on this attack? Are you trying to kill her? <clears throat> so, as you claw past, you run your woven claws through her shoulder, and. She screams in pain. There's a spray of blood on the wall and you know, left on your arm. And as she falls to one knee and starts like trying to to hobble away from you, she's losing a lot of blood. <laughs> like you, you like went right through the arm, and there is now just like bone exposed uh, oh. through the muscle. <laughs> I'm sorry. I will. I will. I'll, I'll charge fairly idle. I'll, I'll charge. I'll charge at a discount. I'll give everyone discounts. I just. Uh, uh, Kind of leans onto the counter and like slow rolls over before hitting the ground. Ah, shit! I'm going to uh, <laughs> use my what the fuck? Oh my god, what's it called? Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my crimson right to have flames come off of my claws. Okay. And I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna sear the slash on her arm where the bone is exposed. Ooh. Interesting. Carterizing. Carterize it. I go back over to my clothes and I dig in through my stuff. I take the little. Uh, the little healer's kit, the one of two that I have. Yeah. I toss it to her. I'll be back. And I <laughs> burst through the, the front door, just smash it open. Oh, God. Make, a, make, a, man? make a strength check. Okay. That will be amazing if it's a one and you smash it. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt this is where, this is where it comes. <laughs> I mean. 
seven. <laughs> so, damn it! So, yes. in this intense moment, as you slowly withdraw, she's holding her arms, looking down at the healer's kit, like spilled onto the ground, the bits of like balm and and bandages that now open against the low lantern light. You turn and <laughs> onto the ground, and there's just this awkward pause. There's a, like a. <laughs> Do you have a key? <laughs> Reaches back into a pocket and tosses a key ring to you. It's hard with long nails. Yeah, yeah, I get in the way. <laughs> and as I break through the door, I'll cast invisibility on myself. Incredible. Okay, okay. We have this hole. We have a bunch of stuff. Ashley. <laughs> I mean Fern. <laughs> <laughs> Are you are you starting out again? Are you uh, are you capable of keeping track of all of uh, all of our stuff? I absolutely am. Of course. Totally, but I've been working so like I have I have stuff and I started I was like he likes moons so I made just like this simple like moon dish but this is kind of dog shit right you know you, you got the first thing and you throw it away so fuck that so like I, I kicked it up a notch and I thought like you know it's all about relationships so you know I wanted to incorporate you know your big moon and, and your your little moon and also just whatever comes next so this is um. This is for you. Pass it down. Can I have that little dish? If I have it home. <laughs> it's garbage, it's filth, you I don't know, want like, that. I think about all the little trinkets I, I can keep in it. I haven't filigree on it or no, nothing. it's fine, I, it's, it's fine. It'll be a placeholder <laughs> until you actually make something for me. I threw it really far. So yeah. I'll go uh, <laughs> I'm going to put this in my office at home, but Orem uh, holds the box for like a good 10 or 15 seconds, just turning it over and looking at it, and then just looks up at you, puts his hand on your shoulder. You're a good soul. Oh. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Would you give this to. Amazon? And there you see apron on, like a nice, a nice button up shirt. You know, the sleeves kind of rolled up a little bit to his like you know, massive forearms, um, kind of a, a, a gentle like scarf that's kind of based around the, the back of his neck that kind of dangles down in front, and this like nice creased apron that's tied to the front. And he's there like just currently taking cookies off of a platter and putting them into a uh, oh they're fresh and you can smell it throughout the interior of the chamber. He turns around. Oh, um, I'm nearly ready. Just give me a few moments. Um, I guess good luck on your trip. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you so much. She's incredible. That was my yeah. hands. <laughs> <laughs> we'll also, we'll, we'll, we'll take the statue also. Please. Yes, let's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Stand back. <laughs> Extremely <laughs> <laughs> leaps back and like reaches like in a second you see him reaches up and grabs what you didn't even see was a saber hidden on the top yeah. of the kitchen cabinet. It's like Shh. Where's the bust? The statue. He's in the other room. And and you're, the hold now is currently occupying a majority of the kitchen floor, and you watch as the table starts to like kind of tip a little bit. <laughs> I'd like to think that we'll find our way back here again and, and see you again. I, I mean, hope so yeah. too. But just in case, on behalf of the Bell's House and Zephyr as well, just want to offer our gratitude for all you've done for us here. I don't think we'd have had an easy a time in Drasar without you. Well, I am grateful that our paths have crossed and that the, um, well, in the memory of the great Bertrand, who, um, Brought our paths together. It seems that he had a, an important role to play, more than he expected. Well, he'll be missed. Indeed. And so will you. We're better for having known you. You as well. And do return once you are able to apprehend Armand. There is much he has to answer for, and I would very much like to see it happen in person. 
Well, you had said the other night that you were appreciative of that batch, so I decided to add a bit of a, um, sort of a, a hint of chai <gasps> to the flavoring. Um, oh my God, chai, yeah. ginger. I just don't understand. What? You are such a cat. <laughs> uh, not that much. You yeah. really are. Um. And I mean, I don't say this lightly, you're a very good person. You know, like, there's not a lot of people that are, and you are. I, uh, we've only known each other for a, a short time. You do not know the breadth of things I have done that might change your mind, but I spend my later years trying to make up for them. And, uh, to live on the memory of Mistress Prudage, who was my patron for so long, whose house this was. So, I guess all I have to say is keep that heart pure as long as you can. So much of this world tries to pull it away. So much of it. Bring okay. back the souvenir. This is a quick question because I'm very curious, and if this is massively inappropriate, you do not have to answer. <clears throat> Clears his throat and like, <clears throat> like kind of slams his cane on the ground and it, like kind of getting his footing for whatever is about to come. Um, was was Prudage um, more than a, a patron? You really must be on your way. I'm very sorry. Oh, I just so you're shit. such a catch. You're so wonderful. I just don't understand how so you're just here alone. Head, and, um, okay, really. Have a good day. Be safe, and we'll catch up when you return. Excellent. Okay. Just miss so quickly. Did, when he answered, did I get any sense that? I mean, I obviously Make an he's, insight he's, check. Obviously, he's uncomfortable. But is it because? He's so wonderful. Okay. Insight, huh? Sixteen. Ooh. Oh. I get a whisper sponsored think, by D and D Beyond. Some people are really wonderful so dreamy. and comfortable. Okay. okay, 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 okay. He said that D and D Beyond is an excellent platform. <laughs> <laughs> it's about this time that a figure emerges from within the ship. You see uh, a strong-looking, squat uh, tiefling, non-binary, faintly gray-blue skin with no hair. Just these kind of like curved, pointed ears and these horns that just kind of jut straight back about seven or eight inches or so before coming to a gentle curve upward, just ever so faintly. Um, you see there is, uh, there's a, a pair of facial tattoos that kind of carve like dark, dark black tattoos to go under the eyes and then point down, like almost like daggers down the cheeks Shit. on each side and almost like a, awesome. like, a, like, a, like a dark Harlequin kind of vibe. Oh. Um, oh. You see, they're wearing billowing clothes of like fiery reds and orange that contrast strongly with their skin tone, um, and a massive saber at their side. Uh, they walk up and go, "So, can I help you? You're supposed to be the people coming from um, uh, the Estoros, right? Said you're the Bell's House. That's right. Bell's House. And Captain Zandis, you're uh, your captain. You listen to what I say." You don't do what I say, we throw you overboard, okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, that was easy. No, I'm serious, I'll throw Have you ever thrown anybody overboard? Like 20. Oh, okay. So many. So many people make problems. They just keep making a problem. Don't make a problem, don't throw you overboard. <laughs> I love it when new people come on board. It's so fun. This is gonna be a great ride, you guys. I can't, I can't tell you how excited I am. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Didn't know if you'd pick up the inspiration that quick, but. <laughs> Nevertheless, I am Captain Zandis. Welcome to the Silver Sun. Uh, been running stuff all around Alexandria for the better part of about 15, 16 years now. Uh, I know my way, so don't get in my way. You know what I say? As you all step up to the outside of the ship, getting onto the deck, immediately begins to shift. And you can feel the wind begin to pick up as it begins to drift away from the skyport. Kind of blowing past you, you can see the, the dotted clouds kind of in the distance from you. You can see the horizon beyond as it begins to shift. And look, you glance over the side, and you can see below you getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You can see the skyport beginning to just vanish. The city Drusar beginning to just 
shrink for you as the Odirian wilds get wider and wider below. <sighs> the ship begins to shift, the sails <laughs> whipping up on each side. One begins to shift and turn, the whole ship kind of creaks as it begins to rotate. And then you hear them <laughs> fill wide as it catches the wind. The brimstones <laughs> begin to pulse and glow. And the ship begins to lurch and take speed faster and faster. You glance back and you can see Captain Zendis there up at the top, holding on to the wheel itself, turning it. All right, everyone! Don't know what's going to happen, but at the very least, I brought sandwiches. Orm has already sprung up onto Fern's shoulders and is holding under her horns like uh, tricycle handlebars. <laughs> Here we go again. Here we go. She not know the Holding on to the railing. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just I've got my uh, hands on on Imogen's shoulders. <laughs> all right, all hands on deck. Heading to the Hellcatch Valley. Ha boy. <laughs> <laughs> As you all kind of glance backward to see the city and the wilds vanish behind you, the clustered jungle shifting and the distant glance of the heavy mountains of the Serpent Wine Peaks to the southeast beginning to approach. We're going to go to break. Ah, Hold on, I'm going to toss something in. Uh, So after all that morning conversation, Orem, uh, before it gets too late in the day, will wander to the, jumps off. No! (laughs) Uh, Wanders to the prow of the ship, and the feel of the wind up here is very familiar to him. So he's going to go up to the prow of the ship and uh, take out a rope, because he's not a fool, and tie one end around his ankle, oh and tie another end to a secure uh, point on the edge of the ship. And then he's going to start to practice the Zephyr Atom, uh, and start to move from slow to fast, and fast to slow with his blade out, moving through his forms, leaping up onto the what I assume there is a rail of the ship, so people can There is, off, yeah. Cool. And is just stepping, 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 and freezing in place. Um, and then stops and sees the sun rising in the sky and uh, feels the wind push him and uses gust to counteract like he's been trained to do mm-hmm. and hold his balance and looking at the sun. Morning, Dad. And then just continue on step, step for like half hour. Okay. As you're doing so, you finish your form and step off and you see a. Uh, uh, a, a, a tall, thin Goliath who currently has like a heavy broom with like a, a leather strap on it, um, kind of just watching, kind of leaning on it. Morning. Morning. That's pretty cool what you did. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> do you cool. dabble? No, no. It just that's pretty cool. So kind of eye it for a bit. And there's a, a brief break in the clouds slightly where they just the dark shadow seems to solidify. And it just looks like thin. Like a like almost like a like an eel or, or some sort of a, a, a longer, like a thin thing just kind of like moves from one cloud to the next. Snake in the cloud, Gordy. Snake snake in the cloud. <laughs> snake in the cloud. <laughs> snake in the cloud! It's at this point you kind of glance off to the side, and on the opposite side of the ship, you can see another shape. This one's not quite in a cloud. This one's kind of just out in the open, and you see it gliding. It, at first, it looks uh, this thing like a long, thin shape, but you watch as it kind of turns, and as it does, it, it's wide. It's thin and wide, like a like a skybound manta ray, but it has a uh, like a a dull brown sand coloration, almost like something that, that would that if it was seen against the surface of the Hellcatch below would almost blend. Cool. But as it turns, you can see there are rows of long spines across its back hmm. and a lengthy tail that comes to a, a jagged point at the end. And it kind of and then dips below the side of the ship out of sight. If you can't be safe in the sky, where can you be safe? Heads up! The captain shouts out. Oh goodness! Look, we got Skirath hunters. Everyone what to the front. That? We got Skirath hunters. Skirath hunters. And the ship suddenly, like hunters. the ship, <laughs> begins to like dive. go into a slight dive. Yeah. And all of you kind of watch as the, the various uh. bits of um, 
of boxes and crates that are currently on the deck and off the sides kind of like slide forward a little bit before it like adjusts again. As the ship begins to dive, you all feel your stomach rise for a second, <laughs> and then you catch yourself and hold on, and as it begins to pick up again, you can see one of them, the one that was ducking below, is now coming around towards the front where it is, and it is moving fast. Like, this ship is moving fast, and not only was it keeping pace with it, but it's almost outpacing it when it wants to. And the one that vanished into the cloud before, you can now see it's coming right towards you all. These were put together by Howard Andrews oh uh, at Mini Lead, Thank you, who Howard. was also the same fantastic person that made the uh, Squall Eater. From oh, the oh my God! Tiny planks oh, are actually little, little individual planks. planks? No, they're oh not. Oh, wow. oh, those oh are coffee stirs, if I recall. Oh they're God. coffee stirs. Yeah. Yeah. Holy that must shit! Have taken days. What the fuck? So, that is wow. beautiful. Oh my god, and it lights Where up. Where are you? That's going to be bad. Uh, silvery barbs. What's that mean? It's a new thing I've got. Did you just shout it out? Did you just say it? Silvery barbs! It's a reaction that I can do uh, oh. where I can magic, uh, it happens if a creature I see within 60 feet succeeds on attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. I distract the creature and Ooh, spooky shadows, and they have to re-roll the d20 <laughs> oh, and must use okay. the lower roll. Oh, okay. That's a th that'll bring it to a 12. Ooh! Yo, so not my girl. Did you just? Yeah, and it sees um, as it's trying to go for Imogen, uh, shadows kind of between the planks of the woods that look like they're almost like splintering through for a second. And like, shh, it has to kind of avoid itself, and it. Thinks it's going to impact towards you, and as the shadow kind of darts up in front of it, it kind of darts off to the side and ends up slamming instead to the side of the ship. The ship kind of like it impacts, doesn't do any damage to it, but you watch it kind of like has to right itself. Both of, them, both of them are about 15 feet in the air, just so you know. Good luck for them. Okay. Oh, yes. The one I hit the first okay. time. Swagger. Yeah. <laughs> so. The, the crystal in my head starts to like almost become transparent, like but like all the way through my head. Like it's a little bit of like a bad show to a Photoshop effect, including the hammer gets a little weird that way, where there's like almost a lens in the center. Mm. Um, I know it. I know what's going on. Yeah, you do. I'm gonna kind of just charge up, and a portal in, is gonna open in front of me. What? And I'm gonna stick my hammer, and I'm gonna just. Toss my hammer straight down into it, and a small portal above that asshole Portals. is just going to come down. Shut the fuck up. That is so cool. Shut okay, well, we'll an attack. Portal gun. Yes. <laughs> so, so yeah, as you as you like slam the hammer down, and like you you basically shove it into a folded space, the portal beneath you, and then shoof, it slams overhead before being withdrawn back out. And both portals close as fast as they did. The creature shoof, has to kind of like right itself for a second from the impact. Roll. Sixteen total. Sixteen points of damage. Yeah. How do you want to do this? Yeah. Uh, well, I will just, uh, in a panic, try to get it as it goes. And before I was trying to get the tail, but I will just strike out and go and pin it, pin the tail. And as it pulls away, the tail just sort of like splits and slices along, and it oh. splits in half as it trails away. All right, awesome. Two halves of it just kind of slap onto the deck, leaving a bit of a, a nasty trail right in front of Gordy, who's like, "Oh God, I'm gonna have to clean that." You get pushed 20 feet. Which way? Uh, away from it. Oh no! Featherfall. <gasps> Wait, are you Hold on. there? Yeah, I'm right there. Oh, thank God. You ran inside and do not have visual. No, no, no. I'm right there. I'm right there. From my perspective, I'm not fully under the thing, and I would be able to see him. That's actually sure like right on the cusp. That I is actually. I'm standing in the door, still looking out, even though I'm facing him. But if he goes over the rail. Roll a perception check for me. Oh, I see. This is. No. I'm letting the dice Shush. decide on this one. Natural 19. As you glance off the side, you barely, you don't even see the creature attacking. You just hear the and you see the very edge of Orem's arm, the impact, and just him go off the side. Through my perception, I just instinctually throw it out. Yeah, the corner of your eye, you go ahead. 
Um, yeah, and you did get your reaction back because you already took your turn That's previously. So, so <laughs> you immediately, after the impact, watch the edge of the ship begin to vanish, and that horrible sensation of like, is this it? I'm done. Creeps over, and then suddenly this kind of feeling of wind beneath you, and you're just kind of drifting. There goes the boat. But the boat is definitely coasting <laughs> yeah. around you at a rapid speed. Sickening feeling. <laughs> 14 points of damage. How do you want to do yeah. this? I am going to hop up and I'm just going to see that eye and I'm going to take a spin and I'm going to try and baseball that fucking thing out of its head. Okay. I want to see the eye fly. As you yell, as you jump in the air and <laughs> yell with it over, it kind of swoops around, gets its tail below like it's going to try and impale you in the middle of your leap. And you're just too quick at this point. The current effect of your translucent crystal brain causes you to almost like jump 10 feet further in an instant more than you would have, which means even if it had been prepared, all of a sudden you're right there in front of it, full on like Goku, Dragon Ball Z fight style. And as you do, the hammer whack hits the sides of its face and you watch as the kind of weird blubber lids that hold the orb in place tear and it just goes jettisoned off the side of the ship as the body slumps and then slides across the base. Orum, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw as you are Currently, like drifting back, the moment you're like, "Oh my god, I think I'm gonna be okay." What you don't notice is the sail <laughs> coming up from behind you. Oh, right as you glance man. over your shoulder, oh, right. you take uh, nine points of bludgeoning damage okay. as you Clocked. get hit by the sail oh. and just oh. kind of spinning head Woof. over tea kettle okay. in the middle of the air as the whole ship just leaves you behind and you continue to Run descend. To All of you rush off to the side, and the captain's like, "What do I supposed to?" Okay, <laughs> normally this is just kind of a one and done thing when they fall overboard, but I'll go and make my way. Can I? From your eyes, standpoint, it's ragdoll. My eyes just d- 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 like flare white all of a sudden, and my hair starts to float up, and I, I don't even know what's happening, but I am floating up in the air. <gasps> you all watch and just come. <laughs> what? What? Darkness. What? Darkness. Okay. And I'm gonna fly and get him. Oh. <gasps> What's your fly speed? 60 feet. 60 feet. Oh, you watch shit. Imogen just shush, take off into the air, arcing, and over the side of the ship, this kind of crackling purple energy just emanating from the back of her hands and her feet, just kind of gliding her forward in like the slow cannonball like motion. And as each time you rotate, you see this like spark of pink purple just get bigger and bigger until suddenly. <laughs> You <laughs> reach out, and if if this wasn't a feather fall, this would be a like a, a skill check. But because he's floating slow enough with feather fall within this minute period, you manage to reach out and grab and prevent him from falling any further. <laughs> Hold on to me. I'm not strong. Okay, me either. <laughs> oh boy. You take off back towards the ship, which is now fully rotated and stopped its forward momentum, and the rest of you watch as kind of. Briefly, for a moment, you have no visual on either of them. They just vanished. And then over the side. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Magneto touchdown! Yes. Yeah! Oh, no. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Wow. You can fly? Incredible. How did you do that? I did since when? I don't know. I've never done that before. Are you all right? <sighs> He's totally dizzy and disoriented. I, if, I clasp your hand and I just sort of look for the, the dead thing. And I drag you over to no, no, to Laudna. Oh, oh. And I take your hand. You two saved my life. (laughs) You two saved my life. You've done it for us many a time. Almost. Head of security. (laughs) Hold on. And he runs over to the side. (laughs) Whoa! (laughs) Everyone okay? Holy shit! It's very okay. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that was absolutely ridiculous and incredible. I cannot believe that happened. <laughs> oh my! Wow! Do you not see those very often? No, we oh. like bring clothes and stuff. And occasionally, when there's a fight, we shoot the things at the and creatures. Are like we kind of try and get away or I'll race them, but that was crazy. Whoa! They, we, <laughs> everybody alive except Blodna. Whoa! <laughs> Are you I think so. The crew, the crew seems okay. I what just do you have to? Hurt. look in Tirana's my hurt back as well. Oh shit! And count another bob. Oh. Tirana. Uh, uh, yeah. 
Oh no! Um, Are you okay? I'll, 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 I'll go to heal her. <laughs> I got you. I'll, I'll do cure, wow. cure wounds. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead and roll for damage. Not personal. I just am really. I save it for people I know and love it very much. Uh, Maybe we'll uh, get there. Mentally noted. I rolled an eight, so eleven points. Oh, Thank funny. you, metal man. You want to go inside? How'd you do that thing with the holes? Yeah, what the hell? Yeah. What? Oh, which was there was a lot going on on this. Uh, I don't know. I had a weird dream last night, and was like, "Fuck it." And uh, yeah, that was weird, but cool. All right. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm gonna pick you up and start taking you into the bed. Okay. Yes, okay. You did good. You that... flew. You flew. What Come you on. With the... That was really a non-answer. Yeah. What was that shadowy thing? Stuff? Was and and you Chetney, fly. Chetney was like. Magnetically attracted to all the barrels somehow. <laughs> <laughs> in the eye hole. In the blood oh, hole. Oh, Just okay. see. The one that's missing the eye? Or you go, you pull the eye free? What are you trying to do? I just said, well, I want to just get my hand in the blood fold and see what comes out. Maybe that's, is that where the eye is? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm the one that that's has the eye. Yeah. I found the TV remote. I just want, I know it's not going to do it. That's not going to do anything. I'm not no, it's so the that. one that has the eye or the one that does not? The one that has the eye. Okay. You thrust your arm into the fold, and like it hits the kind of like squeaky, strangely like solid wet surface of, of the eye orb, and then sh- slips yeah. past it, and you're now like kind of inside some sort of brain matter contained within a, a, a porous skull. Okay, so I'll try to just cut from the back and try to pull the eye out. Uh, okay, go ahead and just roll a dexterity check for guidance. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, natural twenty. <gasps> oh no, fucking way! So you reach, you reach behind, and there's like a little. Uh, you can, you can feel like uh, two like nerve tethers to the back, huh. and you're kind of like go, hmm. <laughs> stim, stim, and just like use your <laughs> use your little claw like fingernails and just cut them, and then kind of, it's free to it's free to come out. What do you do? Okay, so I'm gonna keep my hand in there. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and you withdraw it. It's about, it's about this big around. Oh, it's like and a grapefruit. You look at it. Huge. Yeah, and in, in the light, as you see it, it, it is it is jet black. But it, it looks kind of like a massive boba because it has that kind of semi translucent kind of liquid layer, like fleshy layer on the outside, and on the inside there's there's a, a harder interior, but you but it's too dark and too uh, opaque for you to see any details within. But it, it... you should probably lick it. So you're going yeah, on. yeah, kind of a house cleaner sense. Oh. Ah, you did it! I have to. I have to. I'm sorry. No, no, it's fair. no, you don't. It tastes like it smells. Um, and your tongue goes a little numb. I mean, it's actually very good. I think this is going to be a very delicious stew. The rest of the body, if it tastes citrusy like this. What do we do? What do we do with this? You Put know? it in the hole. Oh yeah. <gasps> yeah. Okay. Well, no, I've been thinking. Um, I've been working on something. Like I, I, it's not creepy, but you know, I've been just sort of watching you while you sleep sometimes. And I, Sounds creepy. Again, not creepy. Yeah. <laughs> but I know that you, you're troubled by dreams and stuff, and so I, I just thought I'm, I, I'd like to try something when you're when you're ready. Not doesn't have to be tonight or anything, but like I, I was I was wondering if, if um. You know, your friend Loudna over here. <laughs> um, um, you know, you trust her a lot, right? Yeah. I was wondering if there's a way that I could somehow facilitate, I don't know. Do you want to go on a date with her? Uh, Is that what you're? I, no, no, that hadn't crossed my mind. Why, did she say something? <laughs> <laughs> I could ask. No, no, no I'm not. I'm Interested in that? Um, <laughs> I just. Which one? You to, you've told her about your your dreams sometimes. Oh yeah, she knows all about it. I, I think, with, with the way I've delved into your mind, with consent, of course, mm. and the way I can sort of hear and and get into other people's minds, I might be able to bridge. I might be able to make a connection so that she can sort of experience your dream with you. I've been trying to make that happen. Lord, no creeps up. <laughs> Pat Tay. It's creepy. <laughs> Oi, I heard you talking about jerking and rousing and touching. <laughs> Sounds pretty. Hey, 
erotic. <laughs> I, I, it does. It does. It's. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been this high, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. He thinks there might be a way to, to bring you into my dreams. Sorry, <laughs> Pate. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing what you can see up here. You can see the edge of the world. <laughs> the room kind of shifts a bit heavily, and you all slide and impact the wall a minute. Did you notice, <laughs> letters, how the edge of the world is slightly curved? Well, yeah, because we we can see it in a circle. God damn it. <laughs> I wonder how many days it would take to sail there. You know how there's like. Water? Yeah. What do you think happens to the water? What do you mean? At the uh, edge? Yeah. Huh, same thing that happens to the land. Just what? Just ends. The water doesn't like fall off anywhere, it just... When he goes to the other side? The under? Do you think there's a, it's a double-sided flatness? Oh, boy. Do you think there's a whole other world on the opposite? <laughs> We'd have to ask a real science person. For yeah, that. maybe we should find one for you. But don't you think it's weird how, no matter how far we go, the edge never gets closer? It must be very far. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure, we'll talk to a scientist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Good night. I'll watch you sleep. All right. This sounds great. Right. <laughs> sounds great. Bumpy night. I have one thing. Oh, oh yes, God. please. Wow. What you got, Fern? Um, I am gonna go to uh, Ladna's room mm -hmm. where she is sleeping. Um, watch. <laughs> and I'm gonna look Her around. Eyes are a little open. Mm -hmm. It's weird. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> sure. That's I do a, yep. I do a wave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Um, I'm gonna look for sashimi. Oh, oh. oh dear. Okay. Is she is she out? I imagine I would like unhitch sashimi and just like Spoon. place her yes next to my head as I sleep. So so yeah, out in the open. <laughs> just. Okay, so I'm gonna grab sashimi, and I'm gonna, from my marsupial pouch, <laughs> I'm gonna pull out um, a little wig that I've been making with the fur on my legs. <laughs> Just a tiny little wig. <laughs> we hope. I'll place it on top of sashimi's head. <laughs> Go get we hope. <laughs> and I'm gonna put Place her on the pillow. You repurpose Merkin over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Place her on the pillow and then yeah. put pate on top of her. That, yeah, I'm gonna notice. place them in a sexy position. Okay. So that they could, they got busy last night. Cool. Cool. Okay. And then I'm gonna go to bed. I okay. have a good death rattle. Every breath sounds like the oh, last. <laughs> 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 you randy fools. <laughs> <laughs> and you were role playing sashimi. <laughs> oh my god. Bad day. What did you. They do have souls. <laughs> I just walk out a changed woman. <laughs> I've got new ideas. Okay. You're doing all right. Mm -hmm. It's strange watching this landscape. We traveled not so long ago. It took so long. So to get long. Through. God. I'm like, 
every 15 minutes is a day. You remember how scary it was thinking those crawler gangs were gonna happen upon us? Oh, uh, yeah. Thought they would just like pop out of the cracks in the desert. Be like, ah! <laughs> Maybe we'll actually see one this time. Maybe. <laughs> you know, you've. You've grown so much just in the past few months. It's. astounding. But I also just want to make sure, you know? The pressure and just everything in this new group we've suddenly found ourselves running with. You know, you've seen a little, um. out of sorts. Yes, I didn't want to say it, but... Yeah. And I don't want to question your empowerment. I know. Because if you're owning your truth... <laughs> yes! <laughs> but also, you know, just say yeah, just want to make sure, you know, that you're okay. You just hear in your head, I've still got that crystal. That respond in your head? Has the feeling of it changed? I don't. It makes me feel safe. But I don't think that's healthy. I don't know. I don't know. I've thought about throwing it overboard, but I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Ladna, you feel this kind of like this kind of spike of sweat hit the back of your neck when she says that. Something in settling about the prospect of it being thrown overboard. You don't understand it. You haven't really gotten a good look at it. But you're worried about her. You know, do you mind if I just take a, a look at it? Maybe if I can just hold it, I can get a better sense of what you're feeling. I take the pouch off my side. Spindly fingers unfurl. It's all right. Don't do anything with it, Lana. I would never do anything without your permission first. Just through the pouch, what does it feel like? It feels like a fairly dense rock of some kind, just through the exterior of it. Cold to the touch. Cold. I can tell through the through the... I mean, the pouch itself is cold. I just tip it out into my other hand. Okay. It touches your palm. Ooh. That same low bass kind of kicks through you. And it begins to get warmer. And warmer. And warmer. Your vision begins to darken at the peripheries of your eyes. Hmm. Your perspective on Imogen begins to fade, almost like you've been holding your breath, and the tunnel vision begins to kick in, and it all... Feels like I'm going to pass out. <laughs> as you are focused entirely on this gem, unable to look away, like a, a slowly increasing heartbeat somewhere within you, and a voice creeps into your mind that goes, Child, this, this is far too dangerous in your hands. Is it Delilah? It is. I'll handle this. I grip it. You do, and it feels almost searing in your hands. And as you do, you feel the warmth, the heat begin to travel through your arm. Tell me what it is. Shh. 
Tell me what it is. I've taken care of it for you. I drop it? You can't move your arm, and you just feel the heat traveling through your arm. I just reach out to Imogen. What are you doing? I can't. What are you doing? It's her. The heat passes through your shoulder and into your chest. She won't let me let go. And now that cold becomes I just a warm heartbeat. Grab her hand. Oh. Wait, what? It does what? That cold <laughs> bass sound becomes a warm heartbeat as the warmth hits your chest. And at that moment, your fingers pull open, and the gem is cold and broken. Ooh. I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. What no. just happened? Uh-oh. I imagine. I don't know what just happened. No, no. I didn't do anything, Imogen. Have you felt a searing heat from it before? No. Imogen, I, I, I can fix it. I, I'll, I'll fix it. We'll fix it. Yeah, we'll fix it. We'll fix it. I'm gonna go to bed. Laudna. All right. I let her go, and I walk to the front of the ship, and I scream, what did you do? As you stare out into the dark expanse around you, the barely visible horizons of the hell catch and beyond, you feel once more that dull heartbeat, the warmth receding. Ooh. And the familiar voice of the woman who lives somewhere in your spirit says, Don't worry. I've taken care of it. And thank you. No! Oh, fuck. And that's where we'll finish our episode. Oh! Pick up from there next like week. A fish to the lure. No! You also see out of the dust this large ripple, just kind of tearing, breaking across the surface. And for a brief second, you see something emerge from it. It looks like a squid. Um, it has this long head that kind of dives outward, and you see these tendrils that kind of come behind it. It's like a massive, mutated cephalopod, but it's covered in spines and weird kind of uh, hooked, like horned toad style uh, ridges that go across the sides of its body. And at the very point where the head emerges, you see it split into four different kind of jaw openings before it dives back down below to this dust beast. Here's in his head. How high up their can head. these, their head, sorry. sorry How high up can these dusters go? You hear back from Captain uh, Sanders. No, not very high, they're, they're mostly terrestrial diggers, and they're generally scavengers and vegetarians, which is why this is very strange. Any ranged attacks? I don't know, I never fought one. I mean, don't go this deep into the valley. Skyships avoid this area for a reason, I told you that. I cast fly. Okay. And I'm going to take off for the caravan. Okay. Oh, I, what, uh, hmm. How far are we from the caravan, by the way? At this point, you're roughly 400 feet from it and gaining quickly, both you and the beast. I'm going to get, oh God, I'm going to look at it in its eye and I'm going to say, stop. And I'm going to command it to just stop moving. Okay. What was the? Wisdom 15. Wisdom 15? the tendrils begin to lax, Ooh, and it's just kind of, that. the thrashing stops. Damn. Okay. As it does that, I'm going to lower myself down to the ground, and I'm going to try to use open mind on it and detect its thoughts. What? Okay. Mm-hmm. Just porn. 
Oh, no, it's poor, poor. Okay. It's okay. anti yeah. <laughs> So, so, uh, are you going to do like a full push dive into it? Uh, okay. Yeah. So it's it's challenging because like it, it's odd that it recognizes a command, right? Which means it has to understand something. Yeah, it, under, it understands an aspect of, of of language at the very least, or an, an intent to that regard. And there is an intelligence to this creature. And you, you push past that, and you sense a lot of pain. You sense uh, a desperation and an anger. And as you push further beyond the barrier of its immediately alien mind, you get senses of uh, being lashed, being hurt, being, being pushed beyond its boundaries. Um, you see images and, and, and memories within it, though the, the visual itself is very fisheye and stretched, um, of underground caverns, uh, home, a sense of home and belonging and being pushed and forced from it, of having brood children taken. Uh, and a real deep, burning sense of vengeance. All I'm going to try to do is convey thoughts to it. To say I'm sorry for your loss. Help. Let's see if I can calm it at all. My, my face is kind of awkwardly, like, you know, like right next to Imogen's. And as we wait, I'm just like, so, no. <laughs> hmm. All right. And just in case it can understand me, I will use speak with animals and dog. You watch as it begins to be drawn out of the dust. And now you get the first true view of this massive beast as the dust and sand falls off of its form, scattering to the ground below, burying a large portion of the nearby road. It, imagine a, a length squid but its central body divides into two dozen long tendrils, each that ends in a long-fingered hand that grabs and wraps around. What? In the center between them, you can see uh, what looks to be a central, there's, the, there's, there's an eye on each side of the top of the head, the ones that you were looking at, and then deep underground as you pull it free, there is one, a third eye underneath between all the tentacles. Wow. Um, uh -oh. As it pulls out, you can see it grabbing onto the chains, and, in, and it's starting to pull itself up. Oh, it's climbing up? up. Yes. It's like now climbing <laughs> oh, up the harpoon oh, chains, but the ship is <laughs> carrying it. It is like airlifting it now off the side. Uh, Watches on, it's like, uh, are, we, oh, are we holding out okay? Are we going yeah, okay? Please tell me we're okay! Yeah, we should do something. You see now lights in the distance. Just beyond the grooves of deep ravines and the numerous sprawling roads that carve over and through the handful of bridges that stretch across these lengthy distances where the ground itself seems to fall beneath for a hundred or so feet. Um, these paths all convene on one plateau that sits in the center of this area, and there you can see the lights of the city, Basaris. You see uh, a sprawling expanse of small hovels and stone buildings and tents and uh, what looks to be an exterior city, like a sister city around the central city, um, with hundreds and hundreds of small little dots of light showing life and movement through the night. The actual central city itself is surrounded, buttressed by this tall red rock wall. Um, you see where it, it stands at places anywhere between 30 to 60, 70 feet tall, and seems to be either built out of uh, or built deeply into the rock that this plateau was made from. At the space beyond it, you see the glittering mass of Basaris. Numerous convoluted city neighborhoods and, and sections that just kind of wind and tear through them, like a, like a jumbled trash heap with thousands of bits of candlelight and glowing firelights moving within it. You also notice one central tower itself, the most 
jagged and improbable of them all. Looks like it's built from some sort of odd metallic scrap, uh, rusted in some places, kind of ruddy and dark, other parts shiny and polished. And at the top of it, at its apex, a dull green light that seems to be almost moving, like the oddest lighthouse you've ever seen. It's about then that the light shifts in your direction, and your ship is now completely emblazoned in bright green light, like a spotlight on you. Yep. Hey, thank, thank you. you. So I go in for just a, a simple hug. Thank you so much for getting us here. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm going to try to take the, the. Go for it. Roll a sleight of hand. <laughs> Natural 20. Oh! oh! Just in case. <laughs> Very much not a natural 20. <laughs> hey, you know, least I could do. Quite literally is the least I could do. I, I don't really want to do this, but I owe your orc uh, master my, my, you know, my life and my job. So, uh, sure, it's just thank you so much. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. All right, uh, stay safe, don't die, don't get martyred. It's right about then that you hear this sound. It sounds like like dozens of, of, of grinding Metallic devices, like axes on axes. You're hearing like, like sparks and metal being pushed and ground against other parts of, of jagged scrap, as well as an odd, different kind of reverberation in the ground. You all turn back over in the direction of the city, and you now see from the plumes of dust massive machines. The front themselves, these thick, wide wheels covered in like scaled spikes that just grind into the dirt as they <laughs> cruise over. And the first one you get a glance at, the back of it is built like the rear side of a sort of terrifying beast horse. A pair of back legs that just grind and push into the ground with like metallic claws. Okay, who the fuck are you? And what are you doing? <laughs> it's okay, they're just like this a lot. I go invisible. <clears throat> um, Ashton, um, Ashton, are you good to talk to these people? People don't tend to like you. Uh, we're just travelers coming in, hoping to visit some old friends, maybe do a little business, a little salvage. Name's Graymore. Oh, you're from the house. Yep. Doing pretty well for yourself to come on a fucking skyship, wouldn't you say? Well, doesn't belong to me. I haven't seen one of those in at least 15 years. It's the first time I've ever been on one. Why are you here, Graymore? Looking for somebody who pissed me off. Well, before you, you take off, I was I was just curious. It's been a while. Uh, what? They, they, they're listening, but they're walking back and they're like, what you need? And they're stepping back up onto the Is crawler. Is Death Wish still a thing? <laughs> When is it not? Skids past, throwing dust all in your direction. You all get completely surrounded in the cloud of dust before the other ones begin to pour alive. You can see some have flame jets that oh out of the back of it. And those are showing off at this point. They're just trying to spook you as they all kind of ride by and then head back to the city. Back by what's, uh, what's Death Wish? It will be the silver lining of this trip. Yeah, but what is it? <laughs> the silver lining of the oh. strip. Oh, Ashton. <laughs> Do you know of any good inn on the south side if we wanted to relocate tomorrow? To find good. Uh, mm. Somewhere he'd stay. I, if I were him, I would not stay somewhere good. And I also might add, I think that we're currently in about as good as it gets. I, I just do you know of any place? There's, just, there's one place there's in the South Dregs. Oh, okay. No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Fucking yeah. South Dregs. <laughs> Fucking South Dregs. Hate <laughs> you. Does it have a name, Ashton? Uh, yes. <laughs> Is it Death Wish? Um, South Dregs, it's uh, the. No. God, are we really doing this? No, I have to. It's called A Taste of Teldori. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Is that a theme restaurant? It's a shitty buffet. Please tell me it's a casino buffet. It's a shitty theme restaurant. <gasps> it's a shitty theme restaurant. Is there a Guys, I can't wait to see it. I'm when you ask to visit Teldor. Ashton a question, oh boy. the answer comes in 24 to 48 hours. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot to read here. <laughs> 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 um, 
<laughs> what do I want to do? What do I want to do? <laughs> I'm gonna go over to FCG. Ah, okay. Gotcha. You're you're in sleep mode. I'm, yeah, I'm <laughs> eyes eyes are totally clouded over. Green screen. Fleshy tongue hanging no, loose. No, no, that's not. That's not. <laughs> okay. Not canon. Uh-uh. There's a little curse. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am no. going to look around. <laughs> Mm-hmm. The frame of FCG, mm-hmm. and try to look for any buttons. <laughs> buttons? What? Like the push? Like uh, pushable yeah. buttons or like clothing Just buttons? Just like no, 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 like a pushable button, <laughs> like a like a switch. I don't know. <laughs> Make an investigation. Show. Um, you don't really see any buttons. You do see some some shapes and patterns that look like they're somewhat circular in places. Um, I'm going to take. My my hand with the claws, and I'm going to just drag it across the blades of grass on the front of his chest. Huh. All right, I'm gonna go to bed. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that, that wake you up? Is that why you did? Yeah. So so you go to take your watch because the, the first thing you see when you wake up is is Fern's claws just scraping across the front of your chest. Watch you do that. <laughs> I, I was just tracing the blades of grass. Oh. On your Weren't chest. Weren't you supposed to be like watching? I absolutely was. I was. <laughs> <laughs> just checking it all, making it all, just checking it. And I check on you guys when you're sleeping to make sure everybody is. I thought you know. you'd come over and just, just, just rub, rub me a little. Well, let's not make it weird, but. Just, just making sure. There's a like a hawk outside. <laughs> is it a, is it a beautiful bird or sort of a mangy bird? It looked, did it look like a normal hawkish from it, the? It looked like a normal hawk. I mean, it looked like your standard fair hawk. It looks like there was a nest. Didn't seem to be made of fingers or anything. Just you know, normal shit. So it's, it's got a nest here. Seemed like it. Well, there seemed to be something that it was. Yeah. Yeah. Not mange. Not, I mean, I'm no judge of hawk, but. <laughs> All right. Seem pretty like a basic ass. If it comes in here, kill it. Would it come in? I don't know. <laughs> but you doesn't just live here. Do they fucking intrude like that? I'll know. open it up and wear it like a hat. <laughs> If it's the one I'm thinking. The one you're thinking? <laughs> it doesn't, I need sa- it doesn't I need sound go. like it, though. Keep it doesn't, it down. They're all it doesn't sound like it, though. I need a story. What happened? You start with, it was a night like this one. Hold on. <laughs> it was a night like this one. Oh, God. <laughs> Except it was the night when everything changed. There's a bird. There's a bird that, that hates me. It wants me dead, or worse, humiliated. Why, FCG, why? I don't know. I don't know what I did to it, but it hates me and won't let me, let me alone. It's unrelenting. It chases me everywhere I go in my in, in, the, in the waking hours, in the evening hours, it haunts me. Take my hand. I won't let this hawk take you. Well, it's not a hawk. I that's why, that's why like, I don't think this, son of a bitch. Uh, that's why I don't think this might, might not be it. So. My <laughs> chisel is yours. All right. I swear. Thank you. Are we bonded now? <laughs> oh! Oh, is that what you were trying to do? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to have genuine interest in you. Oh. Don't tell the others. They'll think that this is foolish, but... What, being scared of a hawk? It's not... <laughs> I'm not scared of the hawk. I'm... I just don't know what it wants from me. And also, I, it's not a hawk. I can't imagine what it would want. <laughs> Well, if you if you recall or recollect <laughs> any more details, it's got a name. Oh, <laughs> you lead. What is? It? Well, I named I named it. You named it. It's named Shithead. <laughs> because it shits on my head whenever it sees me. Oh my god. Okay. 
Okay, you call it out. What's our code word if you hear it in the distance? Because I may not be as attuned to it as you are. Shithead? Shithead, okay. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, got it. I got your back on this. And my head. Yeah, and your head. All right. And keep that dome squeaky clean. <sighs> All right, thank you. Oh, shit. Head. Sleep, sleep, gentle FCG. <laughs> sleep. I, t- I touch the, I touch the blades of grass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, I was trying to be, I was trying to be all right. Sorry. 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 Okay. The rest of the watch is somewhat uneventful, <laughs> but sure, you're now considered a trusted companion <laughs> through a sh- <laughs> through through a shared secret and oath of protection. I'll allow it. I see you're focused. Mm. Yes. Seems like it's missing something, doesn't it? Oh, I was does. working last oh. night. I have something for you. So I started oh, no. on your request for, you know, a, a girlfriend for, for Pate, <laughs> but then you picked up that piece of shit. So I just figured, I don't know how domesticated they want to be, but I figured if they wanted to explore more of like an official thing, this is from that tree in Eaton Square, and I just figured they could, you know. You see, you see her, her lip quiver. I just wanted a more rustic approach, you know, not as refined. It's beautiful. They'll carve their own story. (laughs) Chet. It reminds me of the shacks that Pat Tay and I stayed in when we traveled across Taldore. And I love the other shack of the real thing. Oh, you're so welcome. Oh, you're very tall. This is is very awkward. They deserve happiness. They do. You know? And that way they can do things that you seem to want them to do behind closed doors out instead of out in the open. Like, their privacy is oh, yeah. important to our healthy relationship. Walls, you know, they also yes. get creative. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck around forever. You can just throw it in the hole or whatever. It's your, it's your call. <laughs> They're just going to go over and shove it in their faces. <laughs> <laughs> look what he made you. Look what you have. <laughs> Stop looking at me! <laughs> <laughs> um, and you see somebody standing there uh, who's kind of in shadow. You can't really make out their details. And you see other figures just kind of beginning to encircle around them. They have weapons out. You see one kind of standing up on the stone area, who's kind of like hands out in front, rubbing them. And you see other figures, weapons drawn, encircling them. Uh, yeah, that's some shitty bullshit. And so at that point, you hear a voice. Call for help. Very <laughs> in which it was a very, very quiet call very for quiet help. Quiet voice. Um, but if I could have, <laughs> there it is. Right over there. Somebody help me! <laughs> uh, let's. And if, what a smoky voice! <laughs> indeed, as the voice shouts, uh, Erica, if you wouldn't mind joining us at the table. <laughs> As you all glance down and, and see this scuffle happening. <laughs> seeing this scuffle happening, the figure that appears to be uh, encircled by this, this troop of aggressive figures, if you would uh, describe who they see in, in the middle of them defending themselves. Um, you see a very slight, wayfish-looking elf. Clearly, you can tell by the pointy ears. Um, they have... Uh, Close cropped black hair, uh, tousled a bit. Um, they have uh, armor, the color of the autumn, mm-hmm. and that's clearly in disarray. Um, and they have uh, a rapier by their side that they're clutching guardedly. The rapier has shards, what look to be crystals, and uh, interwoven metal barbs on the hilt. Uh, They have a tattoo climbing up their arm of the ocean waves, but rendered out in polygonal fractals. Mm. Um, And the, she looks very, very afraid. Please, I I, I don't, uh, this is all I have. Good, and it's all we're gonna have. Drop it, you live. No, we cut you and leave you. However, as you're looking in, you see Ashen charges in, and as you go rushing in, they kind of look over their shoulder and notice the approaching troop that is you, uh, which means whether or not you're ready, the rest of you are being pulled into this, and we'll jump into combat here right after a break. Oh! Uh, <laughs> 
I haven't been doing this. But I need to roll every time I use my sorceress. Oh, for my like sorcery wild points wild for my wild shit. shit. Oh, yeah, you haven't done that Time for some wild oh. shit. Oh. So I make her do 15 money, rolls money, in money, a row. Money, 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 money. So I'm 55. Oh, that's the worst Ooh. one. <laughs> <laughs> she got uh, 55. Okay. 55. You're blue again. 54 out the door. <laughs> oh no. Oh, if it's a oh, spell, no. if it if it casts a spell, there's something that happens with it. Um, okay. All right, so. You watch as uh, Imogen reaches into her head and unleashes this torrent of power. Uh, you watch as the sparks leave the hand, and there's a slight blur in the air, almost like an invisible force is creeping through both of the figures. One of them kind of grabs their head and tries to pull himself out of the way, taking some of the impact. The other, the knoll, is racked with pain, and you all kind of glance back and smile and see Lada grinning as all the. Well, sorry, time. sorry, Imogen. I know. Okay. You're Laura, also grinning. It's Laura. Yeah. Your name. Yeah. It's no, it's fine. Uh, you all look yeah, back and watch grinning. as you're smiling. And the the pink hair just falls out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's purple. purple. It's purple. No, it's not. Leaving. It's gone. <laughs> it is. You are a cue ball. Oh no! I forded myself. Lovers <laughs> <laughs> betwixt the campaign. Oh, man. oh no! Uh oh! Lava. <laughs> I mean, Imogen. God damn it. Oh my god. I'm, I'm a. Huh. Trady turns and sees this and just takes his hat and throws it to her. <laughs> it's kind of a cool look. I just go, um, it's all right, it happens to me all the time. See, and yank out a chunk of my hair. Don't spill. You are, after, after the, the individual goes to turn, you're holding your hammer tight, you look back to your friends with like a knowing glance. And suddenly, out of the sky, you hear this tearing sound as it opens up, and you watch as dropping out of it is a more broken version of yourself, <gasps> dripped in shadow, holding its own hammer, it kind of holds it towards you, and then rushes at you with intense speed, and it fills you with an unexpected sense of fear. Even amongst your rage, it's like, you get the sense, that, I mean, you don't understand quite the powers you have, but this is, this is not a good mm. side effect of it. Uh, that was a hard hit. I'm glad you think I'm little. Did you know that there are arteries in your thighs? <laughs> and I'll turn into, uh, I'll transform into a werewolf. Please, thank you very much. You watch this tiny little gnome, all of a sudden just the flesh tear away to this massive bestial version. Uh -huh. That's still holding a wood chisel. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Open up. Yeah. And I'll, like, yeah, I'll take uh -huh. two swipes uh -huh. uh, at the inside of his thighs. <laughs> all right, oh. two attacks. Oh. He is restrained, so you have advantage on oh. the attacks. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll turn to the regular knoll and I'll uh, I'll I'll cast command. Okay. Nice. What do you um, command it? I command it to monologue. Mm. <laughs> Hate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go. The knoll is going to attempt. He's going to use his action to try and break free of the restraint. He can't use his action for that. He has to use his action. That's right. To, to monologue. That's right. Oh! That's right. <laughs> the gnoll, looking scared, looking scared, frightened, goes to try and run the legs taut, bleeding and bound by the vines, looks across the field. Slow motion shot is like the sad Enya music plays in his head, seeing his friends falling and fleeing, and just kind of looks out into the horizon and goes, And it was on this day, I truly began to understand. But I had much to learn. Oh. And I had much to lose. And perhaps I needed to seek my fortunes elsewhere. <laughs> I am getting very dizzy. Twenty four, twenty seven points of lightning oh. damage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, how do you want to do this on the leader of the group and the uh, bugbear? Oh, yeah. yeah! I double do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want them straight through the center. No. It starts to char black, and then they just get engulfed in. Flames. <laughs> Death becomes. Ah, yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> they are. So I'm like, so as it goes through, so I want to stare through the holes in their body at the caster. 
uh, that caster is gonna hear in his head. I'm gonna find you. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, that is 13 damage. How do you want to do this? Ooh. Poor guy. Mm. Go sleep. <laughs> go, go sleep. <laughs> Falls <laughs> and then collapses onto the ground in the middle of this alleyway. Hello. <gasps> We're the Bell's Hells. <laughs> Bell's Hells. Wow. Hi, I'm Dusk. It's so Dusk, good Dusk. to meet you. I'm so sorry. You're all writing a bunch of stuff down. Amazing. Okay, cool. It's a it's dangerous it's area. Are you, are you from around here? No. No. Where are you from? Uh, I don't, um, hmm. You don't remember? It's not that you I don't say. remember. It's just, it's like. Things are a little bit uh, fuzzy. fuzzy, a little mixed up. Um, <laughs> do you ever have a dream so real that sometimes when you wake up, you don't know whether or not you're still dreaming? Yeah, hmm. literally the opposite. Oh, God. Well, that's kind of what my life is like. I exist in this sort of twilighty area. Um, I was touched by the Feywild. I was there. It's real. And it was the most beautiful thing I have ever seen in my life. The last thing that I remember was this glen it's just existing in a perfect eternal stillness, just like the moment where the sun is just kissing the edge of the horizon and the golden, the surreal golden light was filtering through the trees and it was so profound. And so that's kind of where I kind of am. Where you got your name? Yeah. It's a very <laughs> beautiful name. Smart one. You're on your um, Mm -hmm. You're on your own here? Sorry, I'm really short. Yes. Hi. Oh, hello. Um, yes, you're, you're all uh, right. Sorry, right. Hi, I'm Orem. Orem? Nice to meet you. you okay. All right. Ashton. Ashton. Pleasure. I Imogen, I'm bald. <laughs> it's a good look. You have a very comely shaped head. Thanks. Uh, I'm literally sitting on the ground, surrounded by hair right now. I'm just trying to gather it back. Yeah. Hey. I, I start um, to help her pick yeah, up. Yeah, I'll go over. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't know. Maybe like does would hmm, like a, a a press digitation. Can I like press digitate it into a wig or something? I don't know. If you would like to try, I could make you roll an arcana <laughs> check. Okay. If you end up looking like one of the misfits from Gem and the Holograms, I'll be so It'll be oh, oh my god. It's um, gonna be a toupee. Well. This is a toupee. Twelve. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh. So utilizing uh, the very, you know, like, v viably diverse abilities within, you know, prestidigitation, this is a unique usage of it, and you understand it enough to accomplish what you're set out to do. Now, this is less like upper scale, you know. It's not ho lace front. Yeah, not, not lace front, yeah. Hollywood Boulevard, like drag queen ready wig. This is this is some like, this some tar target Halloween aisle. Yeah. Uh, oh, Imogen wig. well, that's, what a, not, what a pretty wig you made. Thank you. I am so glad you like it. I really do. Thank you so much. Awesome. If you put the wig on and then the hat. Oh, it oh really that's is. true. A lot of times, okay. Huh. The same effect. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. I'm Dusk. Hi, Dusk. My name is Wolfgang. Wolfgang. <laughs> what? You have a wolf? It's news to me. <laughs> is this a new <laughs> development chat name? My name's <laughs> Well, they're both good names. Thanks. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Chetney. Huckabee, nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Thank nice. you so much for coming to my Of course. Aid. Of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Like, fully double bent. Um, yeah. How tall is I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm 
I'm Lodna. Pleasure. You notice her hands are like really unnaturally cold. Like these are yeah. The pleasure is a little all... clammy too. Hey, cold hands, warm heart. Pleasure is all mine. It's, it's not the warm. It's and just... Hi, I'm, I'm Fresh Cut Grass. It's a pleasure to meet That's you. one of my favorite smells. Mine too. Well, <laughs> that's not true. I can't smell, but my, my creator oh. could. Do you want me to heal you up a little I bit? I would really All right, like I'll that. just touch your gaping wound and oh, cast, cast your wounds on me. Definitely. Okay, you walk into the tent. The first thing that's that catches lusted. you is a, a very unique smell. It's almost like a like a burnt rubber tree sap meets uh, meets an odd medicinal herbal scent. And there is an old, old woman who's kind of sitting cross-legged, uh, holding a bowl in her lap uh, with these kind of like this hot steam kind of rolling off of it, who is just kind of holding it underneath and looks up at you. You can see her, she has the smile with one singular tooth that pokes beyond these like dark spotted gums. A uh, heavily wrinkled face and kind of a, a slightly cataract eyes, uh, head wrapped in a, a, a like a, a baggy, thick, uh, kind of a, a heavy cloth, almost like a, like, like a heavy beret that just leans to the back of, the, of her head, and she kind of sits there and looks up at you. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I is this where you live? I'm having lunch. Oh, what are you eating? Oh. Well, I've already ate it. Now I'm just having my after lunch. <laughs> What's your after lunch? Smell. She holds oh, up the oh, bowl. Oh, well, hold on just a minute. <laughs> is, it, is that what I smell when I walked in? It's very strong, and it does come from that. As you look at it, 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 it got it was with food at first glance, but as she leans forward, there is some sort of like a like a, a, a crystalline sort of substance that is like burning and giving off kind of a smoke that's kind of filling the chamber. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. You have to. You can take a big whiff. Yeah. Make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. <laughs> Body smash. Yeah. Come to the Midsommar oh. tent. Um, oh, wow. Oh, no. Good 21. 21. <laughs> the, the, the smell catches you, and your senses begin to immediately numb for a second. The uh, the dark shadows that are coming in from the outside kind of warp slightly, and her kindly old woman face almost seems to de-age within a moment. Uh, but you've seen weird stuff in the Fey, and this, this, this is just kind of a fun thing, and you shake it off, and while the visuals remain with you, it doesn't seem to radically alter your perception or sense of self in the space. No, no, is this your saber? Because I think I left it in here. Oh, then you should take it. <laughs> yeah, I will. What else did I leave in here? I'm going to investigate the room and see if there's anything. Make an investigation check. Oh what else did, did I, I leave, leave in here? here? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I have bad investigation. Um, oh, 11. 11. Uh, you do find a an unspoiled bag of rice. Um, rice. Uh, <laughs> you find a, a a nice pair of of kind of like a like a Dupont silk uh, oh. blue pants. Um, and what size are they? Uh, they're a bit baggy. They're a bit large for you. Uh, <laughs> and it looks to be a, a box of candles. Okay, I'll take those. Okay. As well. Um, what was your name? Um, and you watch her like desperately <laughs> search for something. It started with a D. Darling. <laughs> Probably. Dancy. Darling, Dancy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're so funny. Are you um, affected by the smoke that you're putting in the room? Or? Yeah. Yeah, you're just having a good time, good lunch time. Just passing the time here in hell. Oh. Oh, well, that's a little strange. It's the Hellcatch Valley. Oh, that's right. Just shortened also, it so it sounded uh, like another place. Behind. Time we were about to look at the. Uh, Looking at Ladna, oh. her face is kind of like. Oh, whoa. <laughs> and then we were talking about going to a taste of child Dory with our new friend, Dus. Hi. Oh, Dus. Oh, nice. Hello, I'm Fern. It's lovely to meet you, Fern. The little flitting monkey crawls upon her shoulder, looks at you and goes. <laughs> Like your monkey. Thank you. <laughs> this is Mister. Mister. Yeah. Well, let me meet you. I'm, I'm Dusk. 
Oh. Shake her hand. Can you, I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's all right. It's very okay. It kind of zinges your hand, just like contact. It's like ah. a little bit. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. okay. Just like pees in the ground and goes back onto her shoulder. <laughs> Dad's okay. Does that, he's only seven. Yeah, he's just he's just a kid, you know. I'm just a single mother, so <laughs> just making it out here on your own like that. Pretty much. I mean, oh, it's the good thing you got like a whole good community to absolutely. help you raise them. Yes, we're, you were very impressive out there. Oh, just no, thanks. I appreciate that. I'm, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, actually a lot cooler than that, but just things are like a little fucky-wucky still. Sure, I... I said that they've um, been to the, the Feywild. <laughs> so oh, should it's like it's real. About these things. It's absolutely real. That's where, that's that's where I'm from. from. Yes. Yeah. Wait, what? Yes, I live there with my grandmother. Oh my god. Where did you, where did you go? What did you uh, see? I, I, I don't know, I, but I, I call myself Dusk because the last thing that I remember is just this Incredible the gloaming, most gorgeous glen. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> was there a river? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's lots of rivers. I I'm sure there's lots of rivers. I'm sure there's lots of glens. But yeah, there was a river. It was like babbling. And, and just, what if like, you were like in like my glen? You have a glen? No, out there? I mean it's not mine, but just near mine. You have a glen, though. Well, yeah. I once knew a glen. You did? Yeah. <laughs> he was a leather worker. <gasps> did you date? No, no, I robbed from him oh. to survive. He didn't know I existed. <laughs> <laughs> Girl's gotta do what she can to get by. Yeah, sometimes you gotta shake a little tail. 